when I say user autonomy, what I'm talking about is, at the simplest level, the ability of people to do more for themselves, by themselves, without having to ask anyone's permission and without having to uh, submit to anyone's control over what it is that they're doing. Um, what happened in the industrial information and cultural economy was that people shifted from being relatively uh, free to use a limited range of materials that they had in social settings that were open for conversation, family, friends, relatively small localities for the majority of people, to an industrial model of cultural production where the materials were produced by some set of professional commercial producers who then controlled the experience and located individuals at the passive receiving end of the cultural conversation so that efforts to take these materials and remake them or efforts to participate as a cultural speaker uh, by and large required permission. What we're seeing now is that through a combination of um, technology, uh, both digital processing and computation technology and networking technology, um, people can take more of their cultural environment, more of the information environment, make it their own, use it as found materials to put together their own expressions, do their own research, create their own communications, create their own communities when they need collaboration with others. Rather than relying on a limited set of existing institutions or on a set of materials that they're not allowed to use without going and, ask, and asking, please, may I use this? Please, may I create? What happens when people can do more for and by themselves is that the set of actors, primarily companies, in some places governments, that control the experience, those whose permission was required, are resisting this transition. Because control is a good thing to get if you can get it. Or at least control is a good thing to have if you can get it. Um, and what we're seeing today is a series of different kinds of campaigns. Some of them quite self-conscious. Um, I think, for example, Hollywood's campaign to expand uh, technological constraint on use of cultural materials, digital rights management, trusted systems, uh, is, self -con is a self-conscious campaign. Some of it um, much less conscious uh, much more based on um, anxieties and speaking out anxieties. So, for example, when you hear the persistent concerns over Internet security and what will happen if people crack your system, when you hear the constant concerns about quality and where will good quality come from and the error rate in Wikipedia, these are all much more subconscious expressions of a fear that end up being used as justification for embracing the control system that is being displaced because of the technological and social actions uh, that were, be or, or because of the technological characteristics and the social practices that are being adopted in widespread cooperative uh, uh, networked practices. Um, and so we're seeing sometimes legal moves uh, to change and require legal control where practically it's no longer uh, necessary. Sometimes we see, um, I wouldn't call them propaganda, but I'd call them public debate and public enactment of anxiety in order to increase the perceived importance of the traditional controllers. The most important place where you see this is Teachers tell students not to use Wikipedia because that use shakes up the sense that I'm the teacher, 
I know exactly what the set of materials are that are approved and capable of being approved. I am used to seeing kids appealing to authority rather than cross-referencing multiple resources. Um, I don't want to teach them that they should see this as a source, but not as a source of authority, a source of insight, a potential move in a research that's always skeptical. And one of the things that has to happen in the context of a radically decentralized system is that we all have to become skeptical readers all the time, which is a fundamental change from the traditional cultural system where we were taught, how do I know if it's true? Well, who said it? Where did they publish it? I'm looking for indicia of authority that will tell me this is authoritative. Instead, I have to begin to develop new uh, um, um, capabilities of looking at five sources, assigning them different levels of weight, and saying, mm, I have reasonable confidence that the correct answer is X rather than Y without really assigning full authority to any single site. So that's another locus of control, trying to get key people to continue to hang on to this sense that you need the expert authority. You need the person who is in charge to tell you what is good and what is not good, what is high quality, what is low quality, what is trustworthy, what is reliable information, what is not reliable information. And that's another domain where we see uh, the controllers, in this case, I think, less um, strategically than in the context of the way that, for example, Hollywood backs digital rights management. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a cousin in terms of self-preservation. Um, um, self uh, but I think it is also a public enactment of, of deeply held beliefs about why it is that the particular people who played the particular role of authoritative speakers in the older system continued to believe in the values that made them authoritative and made their authority important. And so that's much more cultural resistance than it is practical um, uh, 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 legal or technical design resistance. But we're seeing resistance from different kinds of actors who played the role of controllers in the older models trying to preserve their relatively privileged position as controllers through different systems of constraint.